What's up, YouTube? This is 82 and 0. Welcome back. Today, we're going to talk about Nate Thurman. He was born July 25th, 1941, in Akron, Ohio. And he's one of the most underrated centers of all time. Known as Nate the Great, Thurman had worn 42 for both the Golden State Warriors and the Cleveland Cavaliers. And like I said, he grew up in Akron. He started playing as at high school basketball at Akron Central High School, where he played alongside fellow NBA star Gus Johnson. Passing up a scholarship from Ohio State to avoid becoming a backup to Jerry Lucas, a high school rival, Thurman chose to play college at Bowling Green University. Now, he led the Mid-American Conference in rebounds during all three varsity seasons, with a college career average of 17 rebounds per game. And he was named first team All American by the Sports News in 1963. In Thurman's last two years at Bowling Green, he helped lead the team in NCAA tournaments and set a game record with 31 rebounds in the final college game. Now, Thurman was drafted third overall by the San Francisco Warriors, which today are known as the Golden State Warriors. And as a rookie, he didn't play very many minutes because all these minutes were being allocated to Wilt Chamberlain. And in his first season, he averaged 7 points per game, 10.4 rebounds per game. And in his first NBA season, he was named to all-rookie team in 1964. However, Chamberlain would, as you know, be traded in the, I want to say the middle of the season, of the 64-65 season. So this gave Nate Thurman more of an opportunity to step up. Uh, he was playing a lot of the power forward in those first two seasons. And it's kind of crazy to think about that Nate Thurman and Wilt Chamberlain played together. Uh, but his numbers weren't great those first two seasons. Although he did make an all-star appearance his second season, I don't think his 16 points and 18 rebounds is as good as his other seasons. So, really, by 65-66, he was putting up... Or, I'm sorry, by 66-67 is when you started seeing how good he became. He averaged 18.7 points per game and 21.3 21 rebounds per game. And he actually led his team to the finals. Well, him and Rick Barry. After Wilt well, left, they built the team around him and Rick Barry. Although this team wouldn't be able to make it back to the finals because Rick Barry didn't feel like he was being paid enough in the NBA. And he would jump ship over to the ABA. But eventually he would come back to the NBA and play for the Warriors and win a championship with them. Unfortunately, Nate Thurman wasn't there at that time. But... In that 66-67 season, Nate Thurman and the Golden State Warriors defeated the L.A. Lakers in the first round, the St. Louis Hawks in the second round, before losing to the Philadelphia 76ers in six games. In that finals, you know, it was kind of a great experience getting to see Nate Thurman match up against Wilt Chamberlain. Uh, Wilt would take a backwards roll as far as his scoring would go. He'd average 17.7 .7 points per game, 28.5 rebounds per game on 56% per shooting, 56 shooting. Nate Thurman would average 14.2 points per game, 26.7 rebounds per game on 54% shooting. Rick Barry would just be ridiculous in that series, averaging 40.8 points per game which is just absolutely insane. Uh, but anyways, he would go on and play quite a few more, quite a few more years with the Warriors, uh, all the way up until the 73-74 season at the age of 32. That would be his final season there. And I wish I could say the Warriors had good teams around him, but, you know, after they lost Rick Barry during that time, it's hard to get back to the finals. Uh, they tried to build around him. They got Rudy LaRusso in 67-68. But by 68-69, they were a 40-win 
41 win team. By 70, they were a 30 win team. So Nate Thurman didn't have a lot of help playing with San Francisco. And his numbers statistically were good. I mean, his best scoring average came in the 69 70 season where he averaged 21.9 points per game. His best rebounding average was 22.0 rebounds per game in the 67 68 season. And an interesting fact he's the first official player to average, or not average, but to put up a quadruple double. And although I do think that there were quadruple doubles before him because they didn't officially keep track of steals or blocks prior to the 73-74 season. So I do think maybe Wilt or Bill Russell might have had a quadruple double. But officially, Nate Thurman's the first. And this happened on October 18, 1974, when he was on the Chicago Bulls. He put up 22 points. 14 rebounds, 13 assists, and 12 blocks. And it was an overtime game. And that gets me into my next topic. After his tenure with the Warriors, they traded him to the Chicago Bulls for Roland Garrett. Or, I'm sorry. They traded him to the Chicago Bulls for Clifford Ray and a first-round draft pick, which would later be Joe Bryant which for any of you who doesn't know, that's Kobe Bryant's dad. And he would be traded after that, after a couple seasons, to the Chicago Bulls from the Cleveland Cavaliers. So he bounced around a little bit at the end of his career, you know. And I wish I could say that he turned this team around like the Bulls or the Cavs, but even the teams that he went to. Like, for example, the 74-75 Chicago Bulls. The team went 47-35. and And the team had Norm Van Leer, Jerry Sloan, Chet Walker, Bob Love. This was kind of, I want to say like a super team. Because the Chicago Bulls of the early 70s, they were a pretty good win. They were a pretty good team. Like their year prior, they went fifty four and twenty eight. So, the narrative at the time was Nate Thurman's going to help them get over the hump. Although they would lose to the Golden State Warriors, his former team, in seven games. And to make matters worse, the seventh game was the final score was eighty three to seventy nine. You know, because Rick Barry was back on the Golden State Warriors. Kind of crazy to think about that if Nate Thurman was still on the Warriors, he would have had a championship during this time. Although I should mention Nate Thurman was dealing with some injuries. He only played eight minutes in that game. So I never like to put asterisks on championships because injuries are part of the game. I would never say that. But... One thing that probably is on, was on Nate Thurman's mind was if he played more, they would have won the game and he would have won a championship. I'm sure that haunted him. But he just was on decline after that. Uh, they couldn't make it back. Like I said, he got traded to Cleveland Cavaliers for the 75-76 season. And that team would win 49 games but lose to Boston. His final season would be the 76-77 season with the Cavaliers. Losing in the first round. But let's talk about his accolades. He's a Hall of Famer. He's a seven-time All-Star. Five-time All-Defense. And he's named to this NBA 75th anniversary team. And unfortunately, he passed, I don't want to say really early. Because I'm not saying that 74 is really young. But I wish he was still with us today. And... He was at the Golden State Warriors victory parade on June 19, 2015 because he remained a pretty active Golden State Warriors fan. And he returned back to San Francisco and opened up Big Nate's Barbecue. 
He sold the restaurant after 20 years while living in San Francisco with his wife. As of 2019, the Chase Center home venue for the Golden State Warriors features a Big Nate's barbecue kiosk with dishes that pay homage to his career. He was given the title Warriors Legend and Ambassador by the Warriors organization. Thurman died on July 16, 2016, nine days away from his 75th birthday after a short battle with leukemia. During the 2016-17 season, the Warriors paid homage to Thurman by practi- by pat- pitching his number to their jerseys. So rest in peace, Nate Thurman. Um, I do think it's bullshit that they traded him. He should have stayed there and got that championship. And I think it's sad he didn't get to see the Warriors win a championship in 2017 or 18 or even this year. At least he got to see the 2015 title. So that's Nate Thurman's story. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thanks for watching.